Hello everyone, I'm Jade Angelica. Thank you for joining me here at River Lights Books in Dubuque, Iowa. I'm so happy to be with you and to share selections from my book, Where Two Worlds Touch, A Spiritual Journey Through Alzheimer's Disease. I welcome you and invite you to walk with me on the journey. While I was holding mom's hand, sitting with her at Rhythm Time, the Friday morning activity at her nursing home, our eyes met and she smiled. We shook maracas and sang along to old familiar songs, such as How Much Is That Doggy in the Window? and Take Me Out to the Ball Game. My eyes, drawn away from mom for a moment, gazed across the expansive room and noticed what seemed to be a sea of wheelchairs occupied by nursing home residents. The scene tugged at my heart. It looked like a sea of orphans. Most of the wheelchair occupants were diagnosed with Alzheimer's or another form of dementia. While I was shaking maracas and observing the residents participate in this activity, my mind wandered and I wondered why more family members weren't there enjoying this experience with their loved ones. Being with mom and doing this activity together was actually a lot of fun for me, and mom clearly loved and appreciated my company. I saw this in her eyes and smile as I helped her participate more fully than she could on her own. My wandering thoughts led me to recall a recent article in the newspaper advertising the annual Alzheimer's Association Memory Walk, a well-meaning but clearly uninformed reporter used metaphors that I considered distasteful and offensive to describe the sea of persons with Alzheimer's disease. Through his narrow vision, the reporter saw empty shells and octogenarian beach boys able to mount the stage, yet unable to present anything new. Obviously, he had never been to Friday morning rhythm time. There was always something new happening among these beautiful old souls. On this day, Eddie was dancing her version of what looked like the twist. Mary and Tom, a resident couple, were holding hands and looking at each other with moony eyes as we all sang, for it was Mary. Susan was singing in German. Ruth offered to pay for everyone's lunch with the Monopoly money in her red purse. Mom and I were attempting a wheelchair polka. Hands were clapping, feet were tapping, faces were bright with interest and joy. When Mom began her journey through Alzheimer's, I was too terrified to even open a book about it. As her companion through the years, however, I have been given countless opportunities to confront my helplessness and fear. Somehow, I have managed to continuously welcome and embrace these opportunities. Within this embrace, I have come to see persons with Alzheimer's through the eyes of one who seeks meaning and value and beauty in every person and every experience of life. Subsequently, Mom and my new friends with Alzheimer's have guided me into closer relationships with them, with myself, and with God. I have seen their beauty and their value and have fallen hopefully in love with them. Through my love for them, I have discovered satisfaction in life beyond my imagination, beyond my hope. I understand that to consider persons ravaged by a relentless disease such as Alzheimer's to be of value individually and socially, reversals in thinking and imagining are essential. In a culture such as ours, where youth and external beauty are practically worshipped, these reversals are especially challenging. Every older and disabled person I've encountered has vehemently said I don't want to become a burden. Mom and her neighbors reminded me that we may not have a choice about diminishing to the point of dependence. 
But what if caregiving for persons with Alzheimer's and dementia doesn't have to be a burden?